All right, welcome back to the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. Now let's go around the horn for this week's smooth move. Armina Stone moves brought to you by Pittsburgh's largest supplier of the smoothest granite, marble, quartz, countertops. And let's start with Colin Dunlap. What's All right. Your smooth move. How about week? this guy, Adrian Hauser? He's a relief pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers. He was playing against the Phillies today. He vomited twice <laughs> in the eighth inning and still finished it. Once before the inning and then once in midstream as he was pitching. And gutted through it, so to speak. Adrian Hauser, smooth move. Threw up twice and still finished the Glad inning. you shared that information. Thank Colin. you. Not I, a problem, Ron. Makes, makes my night a little brighter. <laughs> you know, Joe Musgrove wasn't very good today. Got knocked down, what, the fourth or fifth inning. But I like the way he stood up for his teammates the other night. He did it against the Cubs earlier this season. He did it the other night against Arizona. He can bunt. He picked the guy off base. He slides hard into second base. I like his attitude, and hopefully he's a guy they can build around. Uh, I'm going to go for Billy Hamilton, that unbelievable catch in center field today for the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, one of my favorite things is to watch the MLB Network do its catch probability thing, you know, one of these stack geek stats that they do, and the number shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. Well, when it's Billy Hamilton, it gets bigger with that ridiculous speed of his. So I'm going to say Billy Hamilton for that unreal catch today against Francisco Cervelli. My smooth move, Gregory Polanco going three for three today. And that is our smooth moves of the week brought to you by Armina Stone, who features Pittsburgh's largest indoor stone gallery of granite and marble countertops imported from all over the world to give you the smoothest countertops in the area. Score a touchdown with new granite countertops from Armina Stone. All right, now let's talk a little bit about the Steelers and their backup quarterback situation. Looks like Mason Rudolph is making a run for the backup job. Possibly he had a good camp. A lot, of, a lot of guys are talking about him and saying how good he looked out there. Ron, would you mind if he's the backup quarterback this year? Hey, if he can do it in, the, in, in preseason and show something, and I'm, I'm, I'm like Mike Tomlin. I'm not going to annoy anyone based on football and shorts. Yeah, it's great. He did great in the offseason stuff and in the mini camp. I still like Landry Jones and his experience. I think there'll be time for Mason Rudolph to be number two, but I'll be real surprised if it's for the opening game in Cleveland. Just because he looks good in shorts, he throws the ball well. Let's see what happens when guys are trying to knock him into next week. Landry Jones, uh, I don't think is very good. But that aside, this is the one time that I'll actually pay attention, no, more than once, but one of the few times I'll pay attention to the preseason games, and really there's much to be extracted from it. There is a true position battle, and it's for backup quarterback and a pretty important position battle, and it'll be, it'll be all played out in the preseason games, Ron. And I think that Mike Tomlin once said that Landry Jones played the most preseason snaps of any quarterback in history. You remember that? I do. A couple of years ago. Yes, yeah, so maybe so, he doesn't need it anymore, right? <laughs> right. But I think Mason Rudolph will end up being the backup. I think he'll be number two on the depth chart when the season Opening starts. Opening day. Mm -hmm. I, I do. I I'll think, be surprised. Yeah, I think uh, Landry Jones is going to have to be really bad in the preseason for that to be the case, or Mason Rudolph is going to have to be exceptional. And even if he is exceptional, He'll likely be doing it against other teams' third stringers. Uh, my real interest will be if Ben Roethlisberger gets hurt. Like, for instance, if he pulls a calf in the middle of a game, do they have the guts to go to Mason Rudolph in that kind of situation or have him ready to go as opposed to Landry Jones? It'll be an entirely different topic of conversation if Ben Roethlisberger should you know, break an ankle. Or what if he has broken knee. toes? Yeah, well, yeah, especially right. if he breaks all of his toes <laughs> at once, they probably have to go to Mason Rudolph because you want to see what he has. And Landry Jones likely won't be here next year. But if it's a one game or two game short term thing, experience. I, I still think they go with Landry. Yeah, I think they go with Landry Jones. I, I, I think Josh is the odd man out. All and right. You can't put that genie back in the bottle if he's <laughs> no. awesome. You know, like if Mason Rudolph comes out and is awesome, right. you can't put that horse back in the barn. It's going to be a topic for weeks and years after that. Well, they'd have to dress all three quarterbacks in a game, too, and I don't think they would dress Mason Rudolph. It'll probably be Landry Jones unless it's a couple game situation. And then I think Mason Rudolph might be your quarterback. All right. I want to touch on Todd Haley. Uh, this guy just said. In the Cleveland, to the Cleveland reporters, that that's the best quarterback room he's ever been in. Does he just hate the Steelers? Well, Tom? I don't. <laughs> when he says best, what do you think he really means? Does he mean like most talent? He's coached Ben Roethlisberger and Kurt Warner. You know, there are some of the backups in Pittsburgh, like Byron Leftwich might be a better quarterback than anybody he has. We'll see about Baker Mayfield, but Tyrod Taylor, what does he mean? Drew Stanton, best? I think he means coachable easy to coach and there's a reason for that a rookie a veteran who's trying to hold on to a starting job and a journeyman third guy of course they're easy to coach Todd Haley's the most predictable human on the planet 
they're going to like warm up to him a little bit and be like, wow, this guy knows a little bit about football. This is pretty unique stuff he's teaching us. Then they're going to run afoul of him, right? They'll get into some sort of spat. The quarterbacks will or the offense will. Then he'll do something totally stupid outside of work, and he'll get fired. <laughs> That's what's going to happen in Cleveland. It's a happened all over the place. Tequila Cowboy in Cleveland on yes. New Year's he Eve may get, He may get suplexed Christmas outside Eve. of a bar in Cleveland. Yeah, I don't know what he's saying. I, you know, I like Todd a lot. I have a lot of respect for him. I think he's a good coach. Uh, but obviously it wasn't – he didn't – Roethlisberger didn't feel like it was working here, and I think maybe the defining blow for that was how unprepared they were at the end of the New England game after the – the Jesse James catch was overruled. They didn't have enough, didn't have plays called. They looked foolish. And I think Haley took a lot of the blame for that. Probably was time for him to move on. I wish him well in Cleveland with that better quarterback room. <laughs> All right, it's time to take a break. Coming up next, we're going to be, go back to the Pirates and talk about one particular play. And these guys have some thoughts on that. That's all coming up next right here on the number one Cochran Sports Showdown.